Hello. Hello. Oh my God. Thank you for coming. Come on in. Oh my God. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And before we get started, let's say hi. Let's say hi to everyone who's here. I see someone. Oh, hi Raquel. Is that you, Joaquin Esteban? Oh my God, and Lucas here too. Violeta, thank you for coming. Oh my God, the whole gang's here. Hi, ho. So, let's start by saying thank you so much to Northgate for bringing us all here together. And are we ready to make cookies? Who wants to make cookies? If you want to make cookies, on the count of three, let's say, thank you, Northgate. All right, so one, two, three. Thank you, Northgate. We are so happy to be here, but let's get started. First, we need to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. So if you're cooking along with me, run to your oven and let's preheat. Make sure there's nothing in your oven. Okay. Preheat. So today I want to share with you all of my cookie tips. And these are little things that I do that are extra just to make a fluffy, yummy cookie. And I figure if you're learning right now and you're a little cute kid, then as you get older, you can evolve this cookie. I just wanna give you all of the tips and tricks to make a cookie that people will be saying, hey, how did you make this cookie? It's so good. So the first thing, if you're using raisins, which I'm using a combination of craisins, which are dried cranberries and raisins and with dehydrated fruit like this, it's always good to soak. So I am going to put them into a pan. So let me show you, hold on. Let me, let me move the camera so that you could see what I'm doing. And I'm putting all of my, my raisins in a pan. And I'm gonna add some juice to it okay so this is a cranberry juice and you if you don't have cranberry juice you could use apple juice you could use water you could use any sort of i mean you could use hot water okay or just water in general and i'm just gonna let them heat up a little bit while we prepare our dough and it's and not it's, nicole we should let their adults help them turn on the stove too huh Excuse me? We should let their adults help them turn on the stove, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yes, if you, if you need adults to help you with this, you can absolutely ask your mom or your grandma or your dad or your older brother or sister, just somebody who knows how to control the flame. But we're also going to use the stove today. So anybody who can help you with that is perfect. So right now we're heating up or soaking our fruit. Okay, so next let's talk about butter. Whenever you're using butter in a cookie, so I let this butter sit overnight and you could tell that it's not it's not mushy. You don't want your butter to be mushy because when you have mushy butter, then your cookies fall flat. So when you have your butter at room temperature and it's just, you know, it's been sort of cold overnight. So it's not really, it's not really super mushy, but you could see, I could stick my finger into it and my fingerprint stays, but it doesn't just collapse completely. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Nicole, they wanna know what 
temperature you have your oven on, they might have missed it at the beginning. I preheated my oven to 375 degrees. Thank you. Yay, I'm so happy. That means people are cooking along or baking along with us. If you're baking, why don't you put raise your hand? That way we know that you're baking with us. Oh yeah, we want we want not only do we want you to bake along with us, we want wow. to see everything. Baking is science and science is fun. We have learning. two people baking with us today. That is Yay. so cool. That is so cool. Okay, let me show you guys really quick what's happening with my raisins. So you can see they're now boiling. And now I'm just going to look, I'm, I'm going to turn off the flame. I just wanted the water to get hot enough. That's why I'm saying when you, if you want, you could just use hot water, sort of just soaking. And we're just going to let them soak in here for a few minutes. And then I'm going to drain them, but we'll get to that. So right now we're talking about the butter. So First things first, let's put our butter in a stand-up mixer. If you don't have a mixer, you can, you can put it in a bowl. It's gonna take a lot more work, but you could put it in a bowl. And if you have a regular handheld mixer, you can mix it with that. So I'm just adding, my two sticks of butter here. And there's a lot of there's a lot of people who like to use who like to use unsalted butter when they're baking. And a lot of recipes call for that, but I feel like using salted butter in cookies gives it way more flavor. So I'm using salted butter. Okay, next we are going to add in both sugars. So this is three fourths of a cup of regular granulated sugar. And then we're also gonna use three fourths of a cup of brown sugar. The thing with brown sugar is you really, whenever there's a measurement for brown sugar, you have to pack it in. So it's not the same as pouring in the, the granulated sugar, which is the white sugar. Brown sugar has molasses in it, so it, it sticks together better. So let me get a spoon and show you how to pack your brown sugar. So you always want to make sure that you have plenty of brown sugar and just smash it into your measuring cup, which is three fourths of a cup as you go. Any questions? None so far, Nicole. Oh, good. Okay, so pack in your brown sugar. As you could see, it takes a minute but we want to make sure we got, you know, a lot of times if, if I wasn't doing this demonstration, I would stick my cup right into the bag and just pack it with my hands, but I want to really show you how to do it. So and I think you all got the recipe. I printed out the recipe as well so that I could do exactly what's on the recipe. So that's what we'll be following today. And I also put it in the chat if anyone had any questions. Oh, perfect. I think, you know, the truth of the matter is that these, that these cookies are gonna make great snacks for the Super Bowl tomorrow, or you could, make them on Valentine's Day and give them to your, your parents or your cousins or your friends, drop them off at their doorstep. It's a nice gift. That's what I like to do. Okay, so adding in the brown sugar and look at it stays in a it stays in a clump even because it is stuck. It's you know, 
pressed in there. It's compact, as they would say. All right. So now let me get my, I'm going to cream this. I'm going to cream this butter and sugar. Just give me one minute to bring over my Okay, so I'm going to put it in my handy dandy uh, um, And I'm going to use my paddle attachment. So this is what the paddle attachment looks like on a regular um, handheld mixer. It is It just looks like two little whisks, which is fine too. All right. And I'm just going to mix it on low until it's creamy. Yes. Yeah, so, so just for, to answer Nancy's questions, yes, it is three fourths of granulated brown sugar, correct? Yes, three fourths of granulated brown sugar and green, I mean, three fourths packed brown sugar and three fourths cup of granulated sugar. Okay. Oh, and Let's not forget, we need a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. So I'm just gonna throw that in there too. All right, so you can see I'm starting to mix this. And while this is mixing, I'm gonna take my raisins and I am going, you can have your mom help you with this. Let me see. I'm gonna take them and just pour them into this little strainer so that we can get as much liquid off of them now. You can see, I just wanna get, I just want the raisins and the cranberries. So I'm going to go ahead and dump the, the liquid. I'm excited, Nicole, about putting potato chips in my cookies. one sec I can't hear you because the the what did you say I'm excited about putting potato chips in my cookies be excited about it it makes a world of difference I promise okay but let's get back to this sound it looks like the it looks like the Mixture is coming along. We're looking for a creamy consistency with the butter and the sugar. We just want to make sure it all comes together. Okay. So I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. And whenever we're going to add in our eggs next, and whenever you're adding eggs, Whenever you're adding eggs, you want to crack your eggs in a bowl or you don't want to crack them directly into the mixture. And the reason we do that is because if you crack an egg and the shell of the egg falls into your batter, that's no good. Someone's going to get a really extra crunchy cookie. And that's not what we're looking to do. So let's crack our eggs in a little bowl and then add them in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cracking my eggs, okay? All right, there's some people who could do it with one hand. I'm not one of those people, but if you can and you're talented like that, I'd say go ahead. Okay, so there you see no shells in my egg, so that one's going in. 
And another one. Cool. That could have been potentially dangerous. Okay. And here we go. So now we're just gonna go ahead and mix our our eggs in. And while those are mixing in, I'm gonna wash my hands. Don't forget to wash your hands. Okay, let's see. I brought up the speed a little bit just to make sure that the egg really combines in with the butter. Okay, and what you could do is you could go ahead and scrape down the sides just to make sure that you got all the butter and the sugar. So future bakers are actually you're baking now. So this is it. We're baking. Okay, so take your take a spatula or a, a rubber spoon or anything you have and just scrape down the edges. Oh, that's my oven telling me it's ready. Okay. <clears throat> and then let's start getting our flour mixture ready. So another thing I wanted to teach you today Another thing I wanted to teach you today was how to measure flour. So a lot of people think that you just shove the, the cup into the flour and the way we packed our brown sugar is the way they pack their flour. That's a huge mistake. And the reason is, is because when you do that, you're adding so much more flour to the recipe. When a recipe calls for flour, it should be light and fluffy and cloudy. And that's how you have to think about it. So I'm gonna show you how to measure your flour. Any questions? Not yet, Nicole. Okay, so then let me show you. So usually I, use a spoon. So for this recipe, we are going to need two cups and one fourth. So this is my one cup and I just drop it into the, into the cup so that it's not compact. It's still light and fluffy. And then just go all the way to the top. And then I take a butter knife and I use the back of my butter knife and I cut it like this so that we could get anything out and then scrape it across the top. So there you go, that's one cup. It's the opposite of the brown sugar. It's, you know, we want light and fluffy. So there's that. And let's do it again because practice makes perfect and we need two cups. Are you following me? Does everybody got this, this flower down? Okay. 
Think of that noise like a little woodpecker pounding on the tree. Okay. And there we go. That's two cups. And then we just need this little one fourth cup. Okay. Hi, Alicia. Hi, how are you? Good. Great okay. tip. I'm sorry? That was a great tip. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> great. Okay, so now we're going to add to our flour, we're going to add baking soda and I believe it's one teaspoon of baking soda and then one teaspoon of salt. And then take a whisk or a, or a fork and just mix it all together so that you make sure everything's evenly distributed, especially the baking soda. Like we want it to really combine into the flour. How's everybody doing? Okay. Yay, we're getting closer to making our cookies. Okay, so now I am going to add in my flour a little bit at a time. So I added maybe half of the mixture and just start mixing that in. On low, just to get it going. Oh, Patty is saying she's having a great time. Oh, I'm so happy. Say hi to Luca. Okay. And just keep on adding your flour gradually. You can see it's starting to come together. When I was a kid, I was so fascinated by the mixer. I couldn't believe that it would combine everything for me. And I, I guess I still am since I own several. Okay. Yeah, I brought it up. I brought the speed up a little bit just to get those last bits of flour. And it looks like we are ready for our next step. So next I'm going to, next I'm gonna to talk to you about coconut. So we're putting in coconut. I toasted my coconut and that's just something that I like to do. But the reason I add coconut to cookies and some people don't like it, but they don't even know it's there. Is because coconut makes your cookie so chewy. So who doesn't want a chewy cookie, right? You have a crisp outside, but then on the inside, you have this like chewiness that's beautiful. And that's because we're adding in coconut. So go ahead and add in your coconut. And oh, then did you toast it on, on the cooktop or did you put it in your oven or what do you recommend? Oh, my, the coconut. So what I did was I got 
I got a little tray and I put aluminum foil and then I added shredded coconut that you can, that I bought at Northgate um, and just put it right on the tray and put it in the toaster oven. So if you have a toaster oven, you can do it like that. If you don't, then you can add it into your regular oven, but you have to keep an eye on it because it'll burn in one second. So if you are toasting coconut, my advice to you is to like, let it be there for two minutes, but after two minutes, just watch it because you'll think, oh, I looked at it and it's white. And then the next minute you look at it, it's burned. So <laughs> toasting coconut is, is something that's, you know, it's, it's sort of tedious because you have to watch, but it makes the house smell so good. And guess what? It makes your cookie taste better. So it's worth the, it's worth it. So go ahead and add in your coconut. And then I'm also going to add in two types of chocolate chips. So I put the milk chocolate chips here and the semi-sweet chocolate chips here. So this is two cups of chocolate chips. And the reason I like to use two types is because the milk chocolate's super sweet and the semi-chocolate is is not as sweet so it's it's a nice it's a nice mixture we'll add those in and then i am also going to add in a cup of chopped pecans and you can really use any nut you have in the house if you if you don't like pecans you could use peanuts or chopped almonds, or walnuts, or pistachios, or pine nuts. I mean, any any nut that you want to add is welcome to the party. And if you don't want to only add one type of nut, add several, but make sure it's only one cup. Okay. So let's get this all mixed. Oh, I'm forgetting one of our main ingredients. our raisins our, or craisins. I'm using a mixture of both. And before I told you that we soak them to rehydrate them, I also forgot to tell you that in the cookie, it tastes like a little jewel, like you're biting into a little candy inside of your cookie and oh, it's perfect. Okay, so let's add in our hydrated raisins. Okay, here we go. Time to mix again. Look at that, it looks like a party in there. And then just mixing it on low, just to combine. Okay, let me get my, my rubber spatula again and just pull this down. It's like a big, it's like a big hunk of, of cookie dough stuck to my paddle. But that also means lots of cookies for us. Okay. So while I am waiting for this, to just let it rest for a few minutes your cookie dough you want the you want to make sure that all the flour gets hydrated with the with the butter and the eggs and all of the flavors to combine we are going to start boiling our we are going to start boiling our water for our chocolate caliente you ready for some chocolate caliente Yes. Okay, I'm washing my hands, everybody. Remember to wash your hands. And let me just grab. Can you fill this up with water for me, please? Okay. All the way to the top. So time to fill up so first to making our 
I have a question for you from Lourdes. Okay. She's asking, she says, I'm sharing some of my cousins with some of my cousins. They are allergic to nuts. Can I add some oatmeal instead? Absolutely. You could add oatmeal if you'd like to. Um, you could add potato chips if you wanted to, like a cup of potato chips if you didn't want to add nuts. Um, you could add broken pieces of pretzel because that'll also give it a crunch and it's salty the way a nut is. Um, I feel like adding oatmeal is going to make your it's going to make your cookie a little more thick. So I would add, I would add a different ingredient, something else. Like, like I said, you could add potato chips, you could add pretzels, just, but yeah, you could also add oatmeal if you want. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So you're welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start making our chocolate caliente. And I'm starting with four cups of water. Chili. Let's do five cups. And I'm going to add in three sticks of cinnamon. So if you have the big cinnamon, you could add in two, but if you don't, and these ones are kind of small, so I'm adding in three. Let me get that other cup of water in there. And also, I am going to add in a splash of vanilla. And I, when I say a splash, I don't even measure it. I just do this. There you go. Just literally a splash. And let's get that boiling. We just want to get that boiling. So I'm going to put it on a medium high flame. And we're going to let that turn into a little, a little cinnamon tea. Okay. And your house will smell amazing just like that. <laughs> oh my God. The house smells so amazing like that. It absolutely does. Okay. So next I want to talk about how we're going to bake our cookies. I am using I have all the fancy, I have all the fancy um, cookie trays, but these old ones are golden. They're so much better than the like fancy ones that are insulated. So if you can raid your grandma's house or anybody's house, your you know if there's old cookie trays, do not throw them out. These are golden, and you want to keep them as long as you can. So just so that I'm not cooking directly onto my cookie tray, I'm adding this nonstick baking pad. And if you don't have this, you could use wax paper or parchment paper. But if you have a, a nonstick baking, baking mat, it's perfect. So remember, find these, get them from your Thea, from you, if your mom has them, like if she says, oh, we're gonna throw those out. So no, please don't throw those out, keep them. Okay, I mean, I think maybe my Nina gave me this one. So ask your Nina too. Okay, here we go. So another tip I wanna share is making all of the cookies the same size. So that's super important when you're, when you're baking cookies is to try to make them all the same size. And by doing that, you could either use a tablespoon, you could use a tablespoon, you could use, um, you know, something that's, everything's gonna come out the same size. So I'm using this, it's a little, it's a, it's a cookie scoop and it's about a tablespoon and a half. And what I do is I just dig right into my cookies and see everything is this is going to be the same size. So that way when you're baking, 
it's uniform and everything cooks at the same time. If you have, if you have it that way, then one isn't going to burn because it's too big and one isn't going to undercook. You know, it's all going to cook at the same time and your cookies come out uniform. So uniform cookies is always what we're looking for. Do we have any questions? I don't see any. I think everybody might be cooking here. Yay, that's perfect. Is everybody making them or is are you guys just watching and making them later on? Let's see if we get any responses here. <laughs> they have this on mute. Oh, Patty's making them now. Oh, cool. Perfect. Oh, and I've also so I wanted to say this, this recipe will make about four dozen cookies. So if, if you only want a dozen, something I like to do is once I have all of my, the cookies I want, I will take, take the rest of the dough and scoop it out like this, like I'm doing now. And then I'll put them in the freezer already scooped and whenever I want cookies, I just pull them out, bring them to room temperature and bake them. And I'll show you, I have, I always have cookie dough on hand. And Tina's making them too. So their house must be, well, will be smelling really, really good. I'm sure. So look. See, look, here is my frozen cookie dough that I made, you know, I don't know. Two weeks ago, I made I made cookies and I only wanted a dozen. So with the rest of it, I freeze it. And let's say it's Wednesday night and you're really craving a cookie, just go pull out six or pull out three or, you know, however many you want. And that's what you could do with your extra cookie dough. And how or long could you they keep them like your, that? How what? long could they keep them in the, how long could you keep them up to, you recommend the in the freezer? I'd say like three months. Okay. You could keep them up to three months, especially if you have them in a, in a freezer bag, which I do. You could keep them in there for about three months. And no, they don't need to be baked longer. You just have to let them come to room temperature. So you don't need to bake them longer. You just need to pull them out like an hour before you're gonna bake them. Let them come to room temperature and then put them in the oven. Okay, Perfect. so let's go back to our, to our cookies. Okay. And you could also give some to your Messina, you know, or you could give a friend frozen cookie dough. Like who wouldn't love that? Come over, I have extra cookie dough. I'll leave it on my, I'll leave it on my front porch for you. Okay. Okay. So after we get all of our, all of our cookies on the mat, we're going to decorate them. And this is where our pretzels come in. And I'm going to use I'm going to use M and M's as well to decorate them. So let me just get these going here. Let me wash my hands really quick. Okay, checking on my on my tea at the same time, but okay. So once all of your cookies are on the mat and they're uniform, I like to take a little a little pretzel and break it in half. So now I have two pieces. Sort of looks like a broken heart, 
and you just shove it into the dough on the top. And you can smash it a little bit. You can smash it a little bit and make sure that it's in there. And when the cookie, it's the reason I break it is because when the cookie expands, it's gonna, you'll see, it's gonna, it's gonna expand with the cookie. If we kept it intact, it would just stay in the middle and it looks sort of awkward. This gives it texture and it makes our cookie more inviting. And you wanna make your cookie as pretty as possible because then it's more inviting and people will wanna eat them. Not that we need to twist any arms on cookies, but still. Okay, so all of my cookies are getting the pretzel treatment and you're just gonna break them in half and stick them in. And then we're also gonna add potato chips to it. So all of these little components are crunchy and salty and so good. I'm not kidding, we really are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a cookie with all those ingredients. You've never had a cookie with what? All the ingredients you're putting on it. <laughs> oh my God. They're the everything cookie and they really are. And I think if you are making these or just watching, you'll love them. You should seriously try them. Okay, I back will. to our. Okay, so now I'm going to add on some M&Ms. And you just want to add them really for color. They're really cute. And if you don't have regular M&Ms, you could always use um, peanut M&Ms or any hard shell candy. And this is part of making them look really pretty. And you know, when it's, if you're making these during the holidays, I know that they sell, they sell M&Ms in like, you know, for Easter and pastel colors or for Valentine's Day in pink and, and red, or, you know, during Christmas, it's only red and green. So you can do that too or be colorful like us and do the rainbow. Okay. Now I like to take some potato chips and just add little pieces here and there, like just to give it a little, a little salt. Any kind of chip or do you prefer one to uh, I prefer Lay's, just regular plain Lay's, but it's, it's, it's just because they're salty and they're flat and they elevate the cookie, but you could, you, I don't know if you can see my potato chips in there. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you can use any potato chips, like you could use ruffles, ruffles would, would be fine. Um, I just, happen to be a Lay's girl. Okay. They should be called Papa Chips. Patty says they're using Lay's. <laughs> <laughs> right? Not Fritos, like you, you should absolutely use potato chips. Like, you know, if anybody's confused that they could use any chip, no, it should absolutely be potato chips. Okay. So now I have my, my cookies ready. I'm going to pop them in the oven for 12 minutes and make sure, make sure that your oven is preheated to 375 before you put them in, because you don't want to put them in at 325 or 400. Your temperature has to be 375. And then you're going to get the perfect cookie. So they're going in. And I 
usually, I usually put them one, like I put them at the one fourth of, of the oven level. So that helps. And make sure you, you set your timer. Okay, so now let's get to our chocolate caliente. It looks like it's not quite, it's not quite boiling yet, but we're almost there. So let me wash my hands. And you just want to take this opportunity again to thank Northgate for bringing us together to have this cookie class. I love what they do for our community. And thank you, Northgate. We are having so much fun making our cookies today. Thank you. Okay. And what store do you go to? <laughs> Which, I'm sorry? What store do you go to? What Northgate? I go to several, actually. I go to... My favorite one is the one on Firestone. And then I also go to the one on Olympic, the Pico Rivera one. Mm -hmm. But my, my home Northgate, when I just want to run in and get tortillas, and is the East LA, is the East LA one on Soto. On Soto, yeah. So I go to all the Northgates. I go to the one in the Habra too. Like just, if I see a Northgate, I'm like, oh, I need to go in. And what I love about shopping at Northgate is you walk in and it's like an adventure. You are able to think, okay, if I get mangoes and I get papaya, what can I make? If I get hojas and I get, you know, some masa, what are the possibilities? I mean, there's just so many possibilities and I love going to the market for that. That, you know, chance to get creative and pull random things and just create things as you get home. So always, always think of the market as an adventure. Okay, it looks like my tea is boiling and ready to make our chocolate caliente. So once the tea's boiling, that means that it has collected some of the flavor from the cinnamon and we've got our vanilla in there. I'm going to take the cinnamon sticks out. Let me just get a spoon. A quick little thing that went on Anaheim and Lincoln when we opened that one up, State College in Lincoln, everybody, there was a news report and they started saying that that was a, going to Northgate is like Disneyland of the grocery stores. <laughs> it, it, oh my God, it totally is. I've been, I've been saying it forever. Before I started doing these classes, I would tell people, it is a Mexican wonderland of a supermarket. Like you don't understand. There's everything you need, and it's, it's all the things that you dream of, of of having at your fingertips under one roof. And they're so beautiful and the tile and it's just super special. And I love going and I'm so happy to be part of this team. <laughs> but okay, I'll stop my love yes, letters. Yes. Let's keep on cooking there, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they probably feel the same way I do. I, there's just no way you can. Okay, so I'm taking out my cinnamon sticks and I'm just gonna discard them. We are going to go ahead and add in chocolate abuelita. So I'm gonna add in two actually. This is a this is a recipe that my husband's grandmother taught me. She is from Mexicali and I watched her make hot chocolate one day and I was like, wow, 
she's using water. I always thought that you used milk and she just used water to make her hot chocolate. And I just thought it makes, it tastes so delicious because you could actually taste the chocolate. You're tasting chocolate more than you are anything else. So let me just grab something to smash up that chocolate and get it melted in. There we go. And just any little tool you have that gives you some space to move the chocolate around. Like I don't want my hand too close to the chocolate, but I want to just make sure that it's melting. And I'm going to lower my flame just a little bit so that it could stop over boiling. And you can see that we're starting to get some foam up on top. We're going to use a molinillo after to get it even more frothy. But right now, I'm just concerned about melting the chocolate. So. Because seriously, who wants to have cookies? without chocolate caliente, not me. Wow, someone, Lourdes already has her first batch of cookies done. She wow, says, oh, is it right? Me. We want to see them. Tag us so we could see them. Yes, please do. And if you don't know, my, my tag is Presley's Pantry. Um, and that's how it's, that's how it's spelled. So please tag me. I'd love to see them. Okay. Okay, so my chocolate is melted. And now I'm just going to add in, I usually have a bigger can, but I only have these little cans today of evaporated milk and I'm going to add those in. And it's just so little bit of a milky flavor and it's so yummy. So we added vanilla and, and we added um, we added vanilla and cinnamon and water and chocolate caliente and now we added in the milk. And the milk doesn't take over, it just gives it a nice flavor. And I'm just gonna use my mononeo that I bought at Northgate. And it's causing a little bit of foam up on top. I've seen ladies do it really fast and I'm like, wow. We have three more minutes for these cookies to come out. And then I'm gonna show you how to decorate your cookie so that it's perfect. Okay, so our chocolate's ready. Let me just grab a mug. And I'm gonna just take some and put it in here. Oh my God, this smells so good. Cookies, chocolate caliente, what more could we want, right? Just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let it cool a little bit. Okay, so once our cookies come out of the oven, what we need to do is we're gonna decorate them just a little bit more on the top 
so that they look perfect. And the way you do that is by adding more chocolate chips to the top. When you see, when you see a cookie in a picture for a magazine, or you see it, um, you know, on a commercial, it always has gooey melted chocolate chips right on top. And the way you do that is the second they come out of the oven, we're gonna add a few more, only like two or three more. It's like, you gotta think of your cookie as an art. Like, you know, what's gonna look pretty. And they say that half of the challenge with food is you eat with your eyes before it even goes into your mouth. So if you make something look really nice, more people are gonna want it. And People are, if you had a cookie that wasn't pretty and then you have one that's pretty and they're both sitting side by side and it's the same recipe, people are gonna say the pretty one is better. And it's all about presentation. So with that in mind, let's get a few extra chocolate chips ready so that the second they come out of the oven, we can decorate our cookies with more chocolate chips, okay? Perfect. So I have about, uh, I have like a minute to go for my cookies, 54 seconds. Let me look at them. Any questions? I don't no? see any. Everybody must be working <laughs> or eating right. one of the two. <laughs> I can see them. They look good. You know, I'm, I'm always, I'm always um, skeptical about pulling them out too early or letting them bake a little longer. Like it really depends on your taste. So some people like their cookies darker. One tip that you need to know is that even if you pull them out a little early and they don't look like they're quite right to you, they're still going to they're still gonna cook because they're still so hot when you bring them out of the oven that they're still gonna have a second to cook. So I wanna leave mine in for like 30 seconds longer. So I'm gonna just do that. But I am ready. Actually, I'm gonna grab something so I could put it on my table so that you guys can watch me decorate. So if you guys go to our website for Northgate Markets, you guys could look at all the cooking classes. Um, I know this is a kids cooking classes, but we also have for adults. I actually have been attending several. I think last week they made empanadas with leftovers or just stuff ready to go. And they also made chile, uh, yellow chili hueritos, stuff with um, shrimp. And I think, uh, what else did she make? Uh, mezcal Jamaica. But every week they've been having cookie classes and believe me, they've been amazing. So please check out our website for any other um, cooking classes that are coming up. Okay. So here they are out of the oven and you just wanna decorate, decorate. Look at where there's an empty space and add a chocolate chip or two. and put them in crevices where you know they're gonna fall and they're gonna get a, a little bit melty. And that's good, that's what we, we want. You could shove them in a little bit because the cookie's soft right now, it'll, it'll take anything you add to it. And do you see the difference already from the cookie that just came out versus what it looks like once I add a chocolate chip or two? I highly recommend letting them sit and cool for about 20 minutes, like only five minutes on the baking sheet, but then 20 minutes on a cooling rack. And once I get these all decorated, then I will put them on the cooling rack. And they're magazine ready. They're Super Bowl ready. They're Valentine's Day ready.
I guess Luca really likes your class. That he's waiting oh. like, uh, for the next one. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So I hope you all had fun making cookies with me. This is what they look like. And I am going to put them on a cooling rack and let them cool for 20 minutes before I have a bite and let my chocolate caliente cool. So show us your cookies. We want to see them. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Northgate, for having me. I hope you have a beautiful weekend and We'll see you next time. Join my other cooking classes. Yes, thank Bye. you, Chef Nicole. Thank you everybody for joining. Please tag us, let us know how your cookies look and how delicious they went. They are. And don't forget to look for all future um, cooking classes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.